You know, I, I hear people say that there's more to life than hockey. Not in the world. I want to talk about the best hockey town. The conversation ends with Warroad, Minnesota. Hockey is definitely part of our heartbeats here in Warroad. Just shy of 1,800 people, this place has produced seven Olympians, five NHL players, and over 80 D1 players. People mostly just ask me how. How has Warroad been able to produce so many great hockey players? Every United States men's gold-winning hockey team has had a player from Warroad, Minnesota. If they want to win a gold medal going forward, they better make sure they have somebody from Warroad on that team. My dad is in the United States Hockey Hall of Fame. Uncle Gordon won a medal. My dad, he also won a medal with my uncle Roger. My brother David also played in 1980 and won a medal. Henry Boucher, Brock Nelson, Gigi Marvin, TJ Oshie. Nine girls that have played Division One and 70 boys that have gone on to Division One. Gathered up here is Brad Thompson. Thompson skids it for the day. Oh, on to the outside. So has it. Centers it with the win. Score! As you approach the city of Warroad from the west, one has to wonder what kind of a small town is this coming up? Warroad is located six miles from Canada. So we're, we're not close to anything. It's ice cold. I don't think there's anything in the world as cold as here. Right when you drive in, you see the hockey sticks on the water tower, and you know you're getting into hockey country. The name Warroad is a Native American name. The Ojibwe were in a big migration into this area. Once the Sioux found out, we started warring with them. That's how Warroad got its name. It was a war trail here that led to the west. We have a legacy that goes back a really long time. No entertainment, show hall, nothing for people to do except go to hockey games. All outdoors, 40 below zero, wind chill probably. We didn't have wind chill, though, thank goodness. And we'd stand on the banks and look down on the hockey. My dad, Cal, had a lot to do with why we're here today. Uh, a whole lot to do with it. When he went into World War II, he took out a life insurance policy on himself that if, if he should not make it back, the money would go to building an indoor rink. Well, fortunately, he made it back, and uh, then he made, made sure we had an indoor rink. To our left, we see the familiar Memorial Arena. It's the home of the Warroad Lakers, the Warroad High School Warriors, and our Warroad Minor Hockey Program. He's in the United States Hockey Hall of Fame. He was a coach of the U.S. national team in 58 that went to Russia. He was the manager of the U.S. national team in 65. Started the hockey program at North Dakota. He was just hockey, hockey, hockey. There was nothing in between. Hockey took over his life. It was his passion, along with others, to make Warroad a, a hockey town. He'd always sit in the same spot in the in the stands in the old gardens, and he'd be chewing on a cigar. He always had the the same uh, trench coat on. Everyone considers him the the godfather of, of hockey and world. That's the beginning of it. Starting with the 1960 Olympics, where we won a gold medal, and two of the players were from Moro, uh, Roger and Bill Christian. We had national players in 56, Guinea Christian. 1958, Christians again. That followed up with high school championships. And it's what we do here, and we do it well. 
My name's Henry Boucher. I'm originally from Warwood, Minnesota. I played all my youth hockey here. We heard a lot of great stories about Henry Bushy, and, and there was this legend about Henry, this, this Native American kid that's so good. I was told he never left the ice. They, they say the whole Met Center where the North Stars used to play, when he got the puck, the whole rink would stand up. Later on in life, you visit with people you run into and you find out most of them are all true, but he was really that good. The people that have come out of here have been from different generations, and this goes way back. And it keeps going. I grew up here and everything about Ward I love. All right, only va fast. As fast as you can. And it takes forever to get here, but once you do, it's like you never want to leave. It's a small community, but there's a lot of life here. I played boys hockey until eighth grade. When girls high school hockey started, uh, key people in the world got behind it. It probably helped that Gigi was uh, a very good player and, and Grandpa Cal made sure, you know, she had a place to play. I remember even being a little bit nervous telling my grandpa, I'm gonna play for the Gophers and kind of basically asked his permission if it was okay. and. But it was probably like three weeks before I passed away. And he looked at me and said, Gigi, I love you. And I'll cheer wherever you play. So it's. He never got to watch me play for the Kofers, but. Or in the Olympics. But he's obviously in our hearts. Johnny and Gigi, hip hip for the boys! Hip hip for the boys! Ooh. Gigi Marvin played with uh, TJ Oshie's group all the way up until about seventh or eighth grade. I remember bringing TJ out here as a, as a squirt. It was the first time I went to Warroad. I ended up going out with my age group, which would be Gigi. Both me and TJ are super competitive, and it didn't matter who the kid was. He, you know, we both wanted to win, and we both wanted to take the puck from each other. Both had the same fire in their belly, and they got into a fight. And the puck was coming in the corner, and we just went after it and just kept going. <laughs> Thankfully, I think our parents were there to break it up. And they both come off the ice crying during a scrimmage. She was even competitive back then as I was, so. However many years, 18 years later, or whatever it was, we're both in the Olympics together over in Sochi. You know, to, to watch them all the way through high school and then to develop through college and then into the national team and the Olympic teams, it was pretty awesome to see uh, two young people that, uh, you know, that reach your goals. It wasn't just from the state of Minnesota. Like, I'm talking two from the same graduating class of 113. The whole community felt a lot of, a lot of pride, you know, being a, a town of this size. And, and we have both a, a player on the men's and women's team in the Olympics. But it's the same thing, if you think about it. Like, it's the same sheet of ice. It's the same game of hockey that I play that I love. It, it really brings me back to the world because 
all my shootout moves have been the same since high school. Yeah, there's 4.6 billion people on the world watching, but like at the root of it, I'm like, this makes me as happy as I was as I was six. I think because Gigi knows everybody, because she comes back at Christmas time or in the summer to run a hockey camp, because she, when she comes back, she will get a call from a relative to go to an outdoor rink and she will go on a moment's notice. It allows them to know her, to say that they, they actually are her friend and that they can relate to her. And I think she's a bridge for these little kids to actually dream of doing what she's doing. You know, these kids, they kind of grew up like me. Like, I was in their shoes at one point. Should we sign your cheeks? Yeah. Oh, we're <laughs> She was the one that would say, hey, my dream can be your dream. Well, the sign says Hockey Town. Come early, stay late, and skate every day. Skating is such a big part of our sport that if you don't have that, you're going to be behind. Hockey is one of them sports where you, you don't get good right away. You have to put some time in. It's not a natural thing to skate like it is to run or, or do other things. Kids in Warwood, they start at a very young age. You know, as soon as they can walk, they're on the ice. One of the things that we offer here is unlimited ice time. The fact that we have free ice and the parents aren't assessed an hourly fee for the ice allows a player from a squirt team to skate with a peewee team. And this doesn't happen anywhere else because usually a parent will stand in the lobby and they'll say, hey, what's he doing on our ice time? We're paying for that. Since nobody pays that hourly fee, we can encourage kids to do extra. And once they start doing extra, then they start improving and their skills develop. And that's one of the things that I like to, to really keep track of is <clears throat> how many of those kids have taken the opportunity and, and developed their talent and, and went on to play after high school. The Gardner family, to me, they are a perfect example of someone looking for an opportunity. They were talented, uh, they were gifted, but what they were missing was good coaching and, and again, that opportunity to have as much ice time as you wanted. They made a huge sacrifice. I've had people tell me the roads are bad, there's a snowstorm. You should just stay home and be safe. But it's not an option. I travel here every weekend. It's about a four hour drive. The hardest thing was just me getting used to being away from them all week and only seeing them on weekends. When we first moved down here, I know it was hard. I remember leaving like our driveway and I would like cry as we left because like my mom would still be in Eagle Lake. We decided to make the move to War Road because we knew it was going to benefit all the kids. We just got used to it and made it work and just really appreciate the, the time that we do have together. I feel 
really good about the opportunities that we've gave the kids. I know we've made a lot of sacrifices, not only Vince and I, but the kids have made a lot of sacrifices. I think they know like how grateful that we all are and like I don't think we say it enough but I think like deep down they obviously know because we've got where we are like and we're thankful for that like without either of them we wouldn't be here I think they know <laughs> hope they know So far, out of the four children, three of them have attained Division I college scholarships out of the deal. And the fourth one coming might be one of the best that we've ever seen in our town. I've heard people say that Damon's a really good hockey player and there's a good chance that he may play in the NHL. Players like Damon Garner don't come along every day. Uh, they're special players, and the, it's it's fun to watch and uh, definitely fun to coach uh, guys like that. It's not going to count. So you got to shoot on this side of the blue line. Okay, so I want one, two, three. You guys are a group. It'll be interesting to watch where it goes from here, to see what he does over the next three or four years to really uh, hopefully keep on that same track to maybe someday be the next guy that is on our wall. He is so determined and he's seen TJ Oshie, Brock Nelson, he's seen them do it and he's seen the path that they've taken and he just says if they can do it, I can do it and I'm going to work just as hard as they did. The Backyard Rink is really special to us because of all the memories that have been created out there. What Tim's created and what the boys have have done with it, with their hockey, um, and the teams that they've played on, the kids have just flourished. And, and we can't put a price on that. I mean, that's why we live here. Tim and I met at the University of North Dakota. He played hockey there. I grew up in Warroad, and our reception was at the gardens. And so we had the idea that we would put on our skates, and is kind of a perfect picture that signifies the start of our life together. So we wait for it to snow a little bit. Then he, we pack it down with our golf cart. And then he takes a hose and sprinkles water on it and just layers it up. And then when it gets thick enough, he starts using the Zamboni with cold water. And then when it gets even more thick, he just uses hot water to get smooth. Yeah, we use hot water. <laughs> and we may not have hot showers at night, but that's OK, because we're doing this for hockey. Our first year was 2005, and it, it wasn't always like it is now. It was actually much smaller, and the plan was never to have this, but it just kind of happened. 64 feet long, and it is maybe 42 feet wide. The ice is about three inches thick. As you can see out here right now, there's no coach, there's no referee. The kids are just playing and developing their skills on their own for parents to drop their kids off, um, for them to spend hours outside, and, and that's just a way of life for us. Just do whatever, you can practice your moves, just have fun, no coaches telling you what to do drills, just have fun. We can come out here anytime we want. Some people may look at this and think that there's development going on, which, which there probably is. You know, the kids are getting better. They're working on their skills and their skating. True, but I, I think we see more of the, the social part of it where kids learn about getting along. You know, we're not policing what's going on out there. I mean, we, cut, we are, we're here watching it, but you know what, if, if two kids have a disagreement, they're gonna have to work it out and say sorry, and, and that's part of it too, and that's no different than life. I see memories from our boys and their friends and the lessons that they've learned, the memories are, are plentiful.
I grew up here. I played uh, youth hockey here uh, through high school. Played on a state championship team. Left to play hockey for four years at Minnesota Duluth. And then I played six years in the minor leagues. I got done playing pro hockey and, uh, you know, Warroad has always felt like home to me. Yeah, I had a friend of mine that coached me in college and when I told him that I was gonna take the, the coaching job in Warroad, he said, why would you wanna do that? Why would you want that pressure? There's a lot of very, very knowledgeable hockey people in Warroad, and if you do mess up, they're gonna they're gonna let you know about it. Yeah, there's a lot of eyes on you all the time. Everybody's always involved and they want to know what's going on and you know how our team's doing how our kids doing you learn to what the expectations are of, of world hockey you know what an honor it is to put on the world jersey you don't want to let anybody down you want to you want to go out there and carry on that uh, the great tradition that all those people laid before you We're held to a higher standard than a lot of other places, and we hold ourselves to a higher standard. Everybody's watching Warroad, and there's always a, a bullseye on us. You know, all the games are important, but the, it seems like the Rosa Warroad game always has a little bit of special meaning for everybody. Uh, intense. We play twice a year now, just you know, and they won the first one, so obviously a little pressure on our guys to get a split. I got a lot of good friends in Roseau. Some of them we were teammates later after high school. But when you put on a Warro jersey and they put on a Roseau jersey, it, it's game on. There's a lot of tension in the air. There aren't too many uh, smiles crack. They're thinking about what they have to do and they don't want to go out there and, and not perform. That was the closest thing that we had to a rivalry Stanley Cup game. It, it's why it's known as the greatest rivalry in the state of Minnesota. Okay, guys. Number one thing, we got to compete. Okay, we talked about it yesterday. We have to compete. We have to play with intensity the whole time. Okay, from the drop of the puck. Okay, pucks and bodies to the net. Don't pass up any opportunities. Throw it on the net. Good things will happen. Get in front of them so he can't see it. Don't give him anything easy. Be smart. Play hard. Don't run your mouths. Just play hard. Beat them where it counts on the scoreboard. Okay, we owe these guys. We owe them. Let's go out and get it. Good first period. Let's start right away. Let's go. There you go. 3,000 people here. Half the rink will be full with green and white, and the other half will be with black and gold. Traditional rivalry that goes back so long. Picked it up, Greg Lane from the blue line. A shot, rebound comes out. They made it. Come on, Kool-Aid! As long as I can remember, we just want to beat him. The whole town seemed like it got up for these games. Here you go, right away, right away. Back on, back, back! That's an action, get going, okay? Don't stand still, make that. Here you go, here you go. That's it, that's it. Let's go! The uh, Royal Warriors defeat the Rosa Rams by a score of 4-1. to one. We're getting close. 
three games and then it's playoff time. You guys play like this, we're gonna give ourselves a very good chance. Sure feels good to beat these guys, doesn't it? All right, good job, I'll see you tomorrow. It's the passion and the rich storied tradition. Kids think that it's attainable and it's proven that it is. There's a little town up in northern Minnesota that sits upon the lake of the world. War road is its name and the people living there are known for their love of the hockey game. I don't know. And it carries on.